At this time, will you please welcome Apostle Jeff Engelhart as he continues our sermon series, Position for Relationship. Well, as you know, we've been talking about relationships. We've been talking about uh, position for relations. How many know that you've been positioned for the relationships that you're in? Did you know that? Did you know that every person that you come in contact with, you have to stop and ask yourself, what is the reason why I'm positioned in this relationship? And so it's really important to talk about that. Well, today we're going to talk about those things. And um, so I'm glad that Denise could join me up here today. We're actually going to talk about what is a, what is a relationship look like with a blended family? How do you navigate through those relationships? Now, if you never had a blended family, it's okay. You're still going to gain something this morning. Matter of fact, you're going to gain the ability to, to not only look into a blended family's life as ours is, but you're also going to be able to help out other family members that have gone through some of the th- same things that Denise and I have gone through by having a blended family. Well, when I say positioned, I mean many times we've fallen in love with, with a person and for whatever reason that person has passed away um, or that person has... Um, you know, somehow, somehow there was an improprietor in the marriage, and it just didn't last. It, it, it broke apart. It crumbled. Um, many times it's using the right tools in a marriage to make a marriage work. I mean, I'm talking about. And so whatever those reasons are, um, maybe, maybe it's substance abuse. Maybe that's why you're no longer married to the person that, you've been, that you were once in love with. Whatever that is, all of a sudden you, you go through that hurt and that separation, and all of a sudden you go from that, and all of a sudden you start falling in love with someone new. It can be, it can be years later, or it can be months later, whatever that looks like. And so that's what we really want to talk about. We, we have been positioned ourselves to love again. How many know that just because you've been hurt doesn't mean that you don't love? So we've been positioned to love again. But it's not just your significant other, but it's your significant others. Because how many know when you get into a blended family situation, you're not just going to love the one that you're marrying, but you're going to love the ones that they bring with them. And sometimes the ones that they bring with them are grown and have their own families and their own opinions. Huh? And you still have to open up your heart big enough to love them and gain their trust, their acceptance. So let's talk a little bit about that this morning. Um... So what I want to talk about is how do we navigate through these situations of life? Because today we want to share about our blended family experience. I want to tell you what we did right and what we did wrong. I know that just blew some of your bubbles. You just realized that I don't have it all together. I don't. And um, especially if if Skylar and Taylor were here today, instead of being in Grand Rapids, they would tell you, yeah, Dad blew it sometimes. But um, that's what we want to talk about today, connecting. So I'll let, Denise, I'll let Denise share a little bit. Thank you. Well, before I begin, I want to just start off by saying that I have some really great news for you, uh, just the most spectacular, best good news that there could ever possibly be. And that good news is, is it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, do like, I do like the grandbaby <laughs> thing. I do like that, yeah. but no, no. <laughs> but he is, he is the good news, and he is the good news in every single way, every single way. And with that good news, um, I just want to begin by saying that when we become a Christian, there are two things that happen automatically. There are two things that happen. Number one, you become justified. God's mercy has been shown toward you and you have been grafted into his family. That is the largest blended family Family. you could ever be part of. And so I hope that even though we're talking on a practical level about a life situation of blending families together, that if you're not in that situation, you're still going to be able to apply that to being part of the body of Christ. The second thing that happens with that good news, that, you know, first you're justified, you're totally justified, someone paid. For, for your sins. I mean, that's just huge. It's mercy. It's mercy all around you. And the second part about that is that being grafted in as a child of God means transformation. That's a very slow change. Absolutely. That's the guarantee of a very slow change of a merciful God who is continuing to work on your life. 
And as we start to think about that foundation, one of the things that Jeff and I had in common before we ever began our journey together as a couple is that he and I had the same assumption that Christ was our foundation. <clears throat> and before I came here today, um, God was just so faithful. He has had on my mind over and over and over again this song. It's called Build Your Life. And in it, it talks about how, how Christ is that firm foundation. And when I thought about God's people, when I thought about the family of God that we have and how interconnected we are, I realized that in that foundation that I can assume the positive that because you are a child of God, that that transforming work is alive and powerful in you. And that because of that, I can extend, extend the same love. I can extend the same mercy to you because I know that you are a child of God. And because of that, you have an assumed value that I don't get to question because you have been made in the identity, the very, the very image of God himself. And so when Jeff and I began our journey together, it was with that sort of um, foundation, <clears throat> that love is first, that the value that God spoke had to be extended to more than the love that he and I shared. Because, you know, <laughs> and we had to recognize too that when we began our journey that just because I was ready for a change and I was ready for love, that didn't mean that everyone else in my family was. It didn't mean that the chapter had closed for my children. It didn't yeah. mean that the chapter had closed for my former in-laws. It didn't mean that the chapter had closed on all of the other relationships that I had. And so there was, we had to have a mindfulness of extending the value and the mercy in that whole situation, which is exactly the same thing that we need to do as a body of Christ um, together. <clears throat> so with that foundation, um, we had to set some parameters for dating. And uh, one thing uh, before I begin is with, with the parameters of dating, when you have children who are in a situation, you can be sure that they're paying very close attention to you very, very close attention to you. And if you are wishy-washy on where you stand and what you believe is a guiding, loving principle that Christ in his authority has laid down for you, then it will be recognized by your children, that same wishy-washiness will. And so I would just encourage you um, that if you have some areas in your life and you're like, mm, you know, what's the big deal about, like, rushing intimacy with another person? What's the big deal about cohabitation? What's the big deal about um, being out, you know, <laughs> like, super late and partying on dates? If you're, like, kind of, if you're, if you're in that kind of situation and you're like, mm, I'm not quite sure, I would just, I would really, really encourage you to go to the authority. I would encourage you to go to God's word and find out why he says what he says because his banner over you is always love. And so if he has laid out some sort of principle for you, it's because he's all about you having life. And you really, honestly, truly, because God is a good giver, you honestly, truly do not need to take something prematurely that has not been given to you by your heavenly father. And so um, because I'm a school teacher... Uh, one of the things that we have to teach kids is to be able to articulate their justifications. And remember, you have been justified in Christ, right? Can you articulate your justification and why you're choosing the decisions that you are choosing? So, <clears throat> like in school, um, we... You know, there are foundational principles like multiplication, like the multiplication of whole numbers. And as a teacher, I have to push those kids, like, to really say how to multiply and why. They really have to justify it. They have to talk to me about aligning digits by place value position, beginning to multiply the second factor, uh, you know, in the ones place by, you know, distributing it first by the, the factor, you know, the ones place factor, in the first factor, 
and then making exchanges as we go. And you have to go into all of this, you know, you have to go into all of this articulation to justify. And so my, que you know, my question for you to think about is like, when you're getting ready to navigate and change the chapter in your life and you have to make decisions that really do truly uh, affect everyone, whether it's a blended family or whether you're part of God's family, can you articulate, can you articulate and justify what has been spoken? Do you know the why behind it? Because that's where people will press you. Your own children will press you on that. They'll, they'll want to know the why. And if you can't say it, if you can't give an account for what you believe and how that's navigating your life, then your children could get the impression that it's okay to be selfish and it's also okay to go ahead and take something that really hasn't been given to you. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so one of the things that we did as a couple is we tried to set up some parameters for ourselves um, and for our children because we, we know somebody's watching us, right? That song, somebody's watching you. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, the failures and the good things that you do, right? Um, and so with that, I would also like to say that because Christ is our foundation and we have that slow change of guarantee, when we head down a path that's wrong, it's okay to also articulate to your family and to your children about where you went wrong and be honest about it. There is a maturity that they're able to handle in that when you, when you have an honest, honest conversation with them about that. Um, but Jeff uh, was really good about coming into our lives and bringing in that parameter of value, that foundation. The foundation is always value. Like, you know, it's not just our love that has value. It's just not me who has value. It was the children. It was the in-laws. It was everybody. All of us had value. And so one of the things that Jeff did is he was really careful about including and not excluding and so he began by knowing that it would take time to develop a relationship with the kids. And he began with gifts. <laughs> because your gift makes room for you. That's what the Bible says, right? So always bring yeah. gifts. Who doesn't like gifts? Right? Yes, you got a brown nose. That's exactly what I'm saying to you. Yeah, and... Um, we went to some like fun things together. We did things together. And we were also careful about the affection that we showed each other, I feel. Mm -hmm. Because in that, it, like I said, just because we were ready to close the book on something didn't mean that everyone else was done grieving. And um, so I, I feel like that was, that was important. As a matter of fact, the very first activity that we did together was a circus. And I recall um, bringing my, my niece, Brittany, because she was the same age as her daughter, Skylar. And we went to a circus together down in Grand Rapids. And when we, left the, when we left them behind at the circus and we got in the car, Brittany said to me on the way home, I feel like, I feel like she should be my aunt and they should be coming home with us. And in my mind, I thought, that's the plan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but out of, out of the mouth of a seven-year-old child. You know what I mean? How amazing is that? There goes a profit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so we, um, we also set up parameters because I lived in Grand Rapids and he lived in Bay City. We were mindful about where we spent the night. Like if I came to town, it wasn't appropriate for me to spend the night where he was. I would spend the night at his brother's house with his sister-in-law. And um, I didn't, There were some trips that I had made without the girls, but overall the girls were mostly with me. Mm -hmm. Um, because they needed some time to be part of the process, and they needed some time to see um, that. And, he, and I just want to pause just for a quick second, because when I was praying today for you guys, I really felt like there's someone who's struggling with loyalty, and I hope that this would be a healing balm to you, just, just this one thought, if you'll consider it. Um, because many times when you go through a divorce and then you begin again, there are lines that are made based on loyalty. And can I just offer to you that God's love is big enough. And so when Jeff came into our lives and he began to actually speak, you know, bluntly about this, he, he would say to the girls, and so would Jeff's mom, of course they're ministering to me, 
And they, they would say, there's room in my heart to love all of you. There's room in my heart to love all of you. So at the, at the cost of the, the great value that God has placed on relationships, would you consider, more so than loyalty, would you consider how God has called us to love and that truly, truly, our hearts are large enough to love many people? Like there's room in our hearts to love everybody. <laughs> there's room in our hearts to love everyone within that extended family. And so you don't have to draw the line of loyalty and say, I can't be friendly, I can't be nice, you know, like to this new, new spouse just because I love my son or I love my daughter or just because they were wrong. And I just extend to you that maybe it's more important to love and then trust in the process of transformation and time. Time is just such a gift and such, such a gift of grace. Can you trust in that time of transformation um, and, and just, you know, settle it in your heart that there's room enough for you to go ahead and choose love rather than loyalty or rather than being right? I recall when, uh, when, it was, when Denise and I had picked out some rings and we knew that we were heading towards marriage, it was really important for me to not only do something special with Denise, but then I also wanted to do something special with her daughters. I took them out to the Montague Inn. We all dressed up, went to the Montague Inn, had dinner there, um, bought them each a gift again, and I said, I'm in love with your mother. I want to make your mom happy. Do you want your mom happy? <laughs> you do want your mother happy, right? <laughs> they're like, they're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> And Taylor says, well, yes, you know. And, and uh, Skylar's like, well, I, I think so. We're like, where's this going? And I said, well. Do we have to move? I said, I am, I am, I'm asking you to let me make your mom happy. And I'm asking you, I'm inviting you into my life, and I'm asking for you to invite me into your lives and when we did that there was something that happened because it was something that I made special for them it, it changed the tide they understood that I'm just not entering or positioned for her life I'm also positioning for their life one of the things that I said to them over and over again is guys I'm not here to replace your dad but I'm going to be a dad figure in your life but I'm not here to replace him Step parents, that is so important that you ask God to place your stepchildren in your heart. Because if you don't place your step, if, if you don't ask God to place them in your heart, then you'll always have this tension, you'll always have this friction. And even when they don't like you yet, or still, huh? If they're already in your heart, guess what? It doesn't matter. Because you love them with unconditional love. Isn't that the same way it is in the body of Christ? There are, somebody, there are people in this room right now that you would not consider yourself hanging out with on a daily basis. But yet you, you extend that grace and that friendship because after all, they're, they're, they're part of the body of Christ. Isn't that right? And you love them on that basis. That doesn't mean that they're not going to disappoint you. That they're not going to maybe fail you or maybe surprise you. You still love each other, just as we found it to love in our, in our household and our relationship. I, I, recall, um, I recall a time when Skylar, you know, when I chaperoned a trip for her. It was early on in, our, in, our, in Denise and I's marriage. And when I chaperoned the trip, it was one of those things that um, she had asked me, you know, I was being called by her dad's last name. All the kids were calling me by their last, her, you know, was, that was her last name. And I, and I didn't say anything about it. I just said, oh, just call me Jeff. Do you know how big and how important that was to that fourth grader? That I didn't say, I'm not her dad. That I didn't say, I'm not Mr. Lenderink, because that was her last name. But I said, oh, just call me Jeff. You see, the Bible says that love covers. It covers. 
and it built trust that day with Skylar and I. And by, and by midway through that park that day, we're in the candle shop watching the candle maker. And she takes me off to the side and she whispers in my ear. And she says, Jeff, can I call you dad? And I said, absolutely. But if you call me dad, you can't go back to calling me Jeff. It was during that moment that I realized at that very moment that I thought I was being positioned in their life. They were being positioned in my life. They made me a better father and a better dad for Landon and Destiny. You all should be grateful. <laughs> huh? Isn't that right? You see, you think you're being positioned in their life, but yet they're being positioned in your life because guess what? One of those things that happen is, is tension and friction because they're not blood. And so that friction and tension happens in a house. Guess what happens even in a church? Friction and tension. And accusation. Oh, and an accusation. Well, just not, not assuming the positive. Yeah. Like allowing your perception to yeah. grow and not assuming the positive. Just, just go in there to the negative. Just go right yeah. there. But, but I, I, I like this one scripture. See, uh, during that time, I was able to build trust with the children. And I like this scripture. It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. And because I found it was really important with my kids is that let your yes be yes and your no be no. Would you all do the same thing with each other? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Um, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that, that, that you are obstinate about it. It just means that if you promise something, follow through. Huh? I think that's just good advice for all of us, isn't it? I would, um, I would also say that through the years of, of seeing my dad and my mom counsel many families, many blended families, and myself recently in the last five years, actually six years, counseling blended families, one of the things that I've realized is that two things can destroy that new blended family. And, um, and there's some other things, but the two main causes that can kill that family right away is money and stepchildren. Money and stepchildren. You say, how can you say that? Well, this is how I can say that. Many times I'm seeing where one parent, where the, where the stepchildren pit the parents against each other. They take the biological parent and then they take the stepparent and they try to pit them against each other. That is not going to make for a peace in your house. It's going to make for pieces in your house. Huh? And so let, let's do the same thing as this blended family, as a congregation together. Let's make sure that we're not pitting someone against each other. Make, make, make sure that we're not standing up for one and not for another. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, let's just choose to love everyone. Amen? And um, I, I would even say this, that um, it's been my experience that when children are older and when you remarry, many times they are less likely to cooperate in forming the happy home. We had two daughters, they were, they were five and seven at the time, and they could have gone really either way, and thank God they went the way they did, and there was peace in my home. But you know what? I realized that peace first starts with me as the parent. Moms and dads, make sure that you're, make sure that you're reaching out beyond just your love that you have for one another. Make sure it's an all-encompassing love that includes the stepchildren. Let, let, let it include the grandkids Huh? Even the step grandkids, let, let it go beyond. My mom and dad were great. They, they included Skylar and Taylor just as if they were always their own grandkids. They never showed partiality at Christmas time. What they bought for them, they bought for them. And that spoke volumes to Denise's ex in laws. And they started doing the same thing. And they were a blessing even to, to Land and Destiny, which was our, our two together. Not only did they bless their grandkids, but they also turned around and blessed our kids as well. That's a great picture of forgiveness and inclusion right there. Amen? And again, in that foundation that comes with the good news, you know, the, the foundation that we have of being justified and valued and full of love, in that we know that love is patient and love is kind. And again, that's just, you know, another consistent part that you find in the Bible um, about how to 
live in action, to, to live in the wisdom that God has for you so that you can have that abundant life within your relationships. And so in, in knowing that love, you know, and knowing that love is patient, Jeff was not forceful. He was not, a, he was not forceful with the girls. He didn't demand their love. He didn't demand their affection. But he was, I, I feel like you were very mindful at picking up on their cues. <laughs> and so he really tried. I, I have to say, like, Jeff really, really tried. With it the is work. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Any blended family here this morning, it is work. Just as marriage is work and marriage is not 50-50, yeah. marriage is 100%, 100%. It's not 50-50. If you think you, you know, pay 50 of the bills and they pay 50% of the bills, no, it doesn't work that way. If you think that you put 50% of your love in and they give 50%, it doesn't work that way. It is 100% you doing as much and as all as you can. So he, um, he was very, very good at just being a constant reassurance to them. He constantly reassured them that he loved them. He constantly mm -hmm. reassured them that he was not there to take anybody's place. He constantly reassured them that he, you know, had room in his heart to love them. He reassured them that he valued their biological father. I mean, he never, although, although we could have said many things, <laughs> We did not, you know, we were, the, the girls needed to know that it was okay for them mm -hmm. to value their family. And it really, we had no right to step in the way of the love that they had for them. We really, we really didn't have any right to be able to do that. So um, he did just constantly reassure them that he was not going to take the place of their dad, that he would be a father uh, support, you know, like a support of a father in their life, but he was not going to actually take his place. And uh, just reaffirming kids over and over again, like constantly with how you truly believe through your actions that you value, mm -hmm. who they love goes a long way. Absolutely. I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture of Hebrews 12, 14 that helped navigate us through some of this. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Make every effort to live at peace with everyone. If we're all striving to make that peace with everyone, guess what? You're going to end up having that peace in your, in your house. Not only are you going to have that peace in your, in your house, but um, you're also going to be holy, the word says. And without holiness, no one will see God. So husband, treat your kids with respect and, um, and, and make mom happy. <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter 224 says this. This explains why a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united as one. The reason I'm saying that scripture is you have to remember, and we always tell our, our, bi our children, our biological children, as well as our st my stepchildren, guess what? When you grow up and you move out of this house, and you will move out of this house, uh, then mom and I are going to be in this house together. We're going to be here Long after you have gone on with your career, long after you've gotten married, long after you, you know, because the two of us have become one. So guess what? My first priority is to stand up for her with my kids. Her first priority is to stand up for me and disagree behind a closed door. Did you hear what I just said? Because how many know that you're going to have disagreements? If you're not having a disagreement, someone's a yes man or a yes woman in the marriage and the other one's not being real. I'm just telling you right now. Isn't that the way it is? And so make sure, make sure that you're doing that. Um, I would say maintain good relationships with your children, biological parents, for the good of your child and never speak poorly of them in front of your children. Don't bash the, the ex. The ex. Don't, don't, don't do it. I also like what 1 Peter chapter verses 3 uh, chapter, excuse me, chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, it says this. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, pay evil with blessings. So that means that if you've got, if you've got something happening, if you've got a bad ex that just be, has bad behavior and they're treating people wrong, or if you've got ex-in-laws that are treating you poorly or treat wrong, guess what the word says? It says, bless them anyway. Turn to the person sitting next and say, bless them anyway. Bless them anyway, actually, because this is who 
we're called so that you may inherit a blessing. If I choose to bless them even in their ignorance, guess what? The word says, I'm going to inherit the blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. So, set parameters with your ex and your children's grandparents. Remember, the gospel gives us parameters of love in action. Love in action. Do the same thing with each other. Have grace for each other as a congregation and as a love for one another. Remember, since you are likely to have children together, try to keep the same house rules and chores for them as you do for the other children in your home. Now, I'm not going to ask my two-year-old to do laundry when I'm asking the nine-year-old to do laundry. You know what I'm saying? But I am going to ask, I am going I'm, I'm to help with the laundry once in a while because I don't feel it's, it's right that they have all the responsibility. And as they all get older and as they're all maturing, guess what? Switch up the chores so that way it's fair. Huh? Switch up the chores. Let your biological children together, let them do some of the grunt work too. Don't, don't, don't have the stepchild in the house. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't have the Cinderella syndrome. Huh? All right. Yeah. So uh, Jeff and I, we had to set up parameters also for discipline and... Um, even in regard to, if you don't mind, can I backtrack on the parameters with grandparents? Sure. Okay. <laughs> when it comes to the parameters with grandparents, we, uh, you know, later on, I was able to be able, I was able to see the value in allowing God to do the work that he's going to do because the gospel does say, you know, that he transforms us. He renews our mind. And that is a, that is a process. That's a time, that's a time issue. And so the grandparents initially, in, our, in my case, uh, reacted out of fear, and that fear grew into perception and a lot of accusation. Mm -hmm. And so it was better for me not to defend myself, but it was better for me to, to um, resort to the thought that my children value their grandparents and I need to honor the love that they have for their grandparents. That's right. So even though out of, you know, even out of fear and even though accusation was going on against me, my kids needed to see their grandparents. And the grandparents needed that time to see that what they had feared wasn't true. I wasn't taking their grandchildren away from them. And they needed to see time that I actually believed that they were valuable to the lives of my children. But... Um, we had parameters, too, even on discipline. And so one of the things that we tried to do for the kids is make me the disciplinarian. And the reason why I was the disciplinarian with Skylar and Taylor, I know this, is, you you know, this could be right, it could be wrong, I don't know. We, it, it made sense in our hearts and in our minds. But my kids didn't have a long-term relationship with Jeff. And I really don't think that you can... Give good discipline if kids don't trust you, if they don't have a trust relationship with you. And I didn't want to make things worse for him in the relationship with Skylar and Taylor. I never, we never made it seem like he was not an authority figure. I would agree with him, and they knew that there was agreement, but I was the one who would be the disciplinarian for them um, pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I think that preserved things. I don't know. I mean, you guys can, you can like dig into that a little further. Maybe there's like a psychologist or somebody out there who has better advice for you on that one. But that was just kind of what, what we did. We, we knew that they had, Jeff had to earn trust before he could dish out discipline. That's right. I, That's right. I think another thing was honor their privacy and their space. Um, you know, re remind them that they earn trust just as, the step parent earns the trust, but let them realize that you have the right for inspection. Huh? Um, they're, you know, we always said you're living in our home because you ain't going to stay here all your life. You know what I'm saying? Parents, that's really important that, that you let them know that they're not staying in your house all their life. That you're giving them life goals, right? That, that you're saying, hey, I, I want you to go to college. I want, I want you to have a career. I want you to, you're going to get married someday. I, I, you know, you always have to make sure that you're projecting the right image with your kids. And uh, that's really important. I, I would say this to recognize the value of each member in the household. Why don't, we, why don't we recognize, let's keep recognizing all the value that's within this house. Let's recognize the value that each other has. Can we do that? 
And as we continue to do that, you'll see that manifest in a, in a peaceful house, in a great house. That's exactly what we did even, even um, with Skyler and Taylor and even with Land and Destin. We always tell them that they have good value. They have great value. And uh, we, we praise them for the, the good report cards. We praise them for the good things they do. We also discipline them for the things they don't do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like what Luke 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 31 says, treat others how you want to be treated. Treat others how you want to be treated. Simple as that. I know we're having to come to a close. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 through 4, it says, Honor your father and mother in this first commandment with promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. How many know the word is full of great examples? If you honor mom and dad and you just go along with us, things will go well for you. Amen? And, uh, and then it says, and you'll have long life on the earth because I won't kill you. No, I'm just kidding. No. But fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. That, that's not only for step, that's not for just stepchildren, but that's all parents. Parents, whether you're step parents or regular parents, make sure you're not provoking your children to wrath. Make sure that you are not just doing stupid things. Pick your battles properly. Pick your battles properly with your children. Um, rather than bring them up in, in the discipline and the instruction that comes from the Lord. Uh, I, had, I had some questions that were, that were sent to me, and I'm going to just hit these really quick. Um, through Facebook this past week, I asked some questions, and, and people were messaging me uh, other things on the side. And some of those messages went like this. They said, how do you deal with old and new holiday traditions? Well, really quickly, every family's different. Try to, hold, uh, try to blend the holiday traditions from both families uh, to form your own. I would also say this, don't have, um, don't have your new spouse do what your child's parent does with them. Let that tradition be with that other spouse. If they always lifted their child and put the star on the tree, well then keep that, let, let that dad do that at his house or whatever with, with that tradition with that family. Let your ex-spouse keep the traditions with them. Try to be flexible even when ex-spouses and ex-in-laws are not. Sometimes that happens. Put yourself in the ex-in-law's shoes. They are not less important, and yet they feel like you, you know, your world, their world was just broken apart, and are they ever going to have a relationship with their grandchildren? Are they ever going to have a relationship with, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it just breaks it apart. That's why God hates divorce so much, is because it breaks apart people's lives. It, it destroys peace in people's lives. That's why God hates divorce. He doesn't say you can't do it. He's just saying, you know what? I want the best for you. And we had to bend over backwards during holiday times. Not oh. only was I divorced, <laughs> my parents are divorced, so it meant like, it meant like. We had five Grand Christmases. Rapids. It was going over to Whole Harrisville, week long. Michigan, whipping over to Midland, Michigan. It meant being in Bay City. We bent over. And then Grand Rapids. We had to bend yeah. over backwards during the holiday times. We yep. really did. <laughs> yep. Really quick, when speaking about chores, what is fair for the child living with you 24-7 compared to the child who is only with you like every other week? Once again, it's age appropriate. Make sure everyone is doing something at the same time. Don't ask your kids to do something and you're not doing anything. Pitch in. That's a, that's a sign of leadership. If leadership isn't willing to do something for you to follow them, how are they ever going to learn? So make sure that you're doing it along with them. Uh, switch uh, chores so children don't feel that they are you're favoring one over the other child. Uh, number three, what parameters do you set with grandparents and relatives? Well, sometimes parameters have to be set. You know, you're not going to talk about you're not going to talk about um, their mom or their dad, huh? If if you down if you down their mom and dad, then you're not then you're not going to get to spend time with them. So you put the ball back in their court and you give them the parameters of relationship. We're not going to talk badly about you, but we don't want you talking badly about us. Huh? If our kids come home and tell us something, guess what? You just lost your rights for the next time, and I'll let you know what you said because it was your choice. You knew the parameters. So make sure to share the parameters with them. And that's where probably my, my big fail was, I would say, in this whole process is um, during the time that the in-laws were still grieving, I, um, I really had to defer to Jeff. Like, I let him talk to my former in-laws for a while because it truly, it was best. It really was. I was so hurt. And um, you wouldn't know this, but when I get angry, I get really angry. <laughs> like, it doesn't, 
I mean, it could take a really long time for me to reach that point. But she once it has hits horns. That, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> once it hits that point, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. And, it, and, and um, I think personality-wise, too, it just take, it takes me a while to bring it down. And, and bringing it down could take me some time. <laughs> Unfortunately. Anyway, he, he was great. I mean, it, it was my heart to have relationship. I wanted everybody to be happy. I wanted us to love each other. I didn't want to have any, you know, of this. But there were times where I was like, they're so, you know. And, and, <laughs> and I had to give her a fresh perspective about it. Yeah, and, and he, you know, and he would. He, he would have to be the buffer between the relationships. And thank goodness he's. He's got a, that, he can speak in that, in that gentle way. And because they weren't necessarily upset with him and they were upset with me, he was the best choice for that time period. It, and it all goes back to the word, guys, live at peace with everyone. Strive to love everyone. Yeah. If you're loving everyone, you're going to strive for peace for everyone. Isn't that right? Amen. I'm going to have you all stand with me this morning. And if they can play some music in the back, back of the booth there for us. I'm going to ask that, the, that those from the prayer partner ministry would come and prayer response team, they're down here to pray with you. Um, I know we went over our time today. Uh, thank you for being gracious to us today. Don't forget, next Sunday we're at Bay Valley Resort. Next Sunday we're at Bay Valley Resort, so don't forget about that. Make sure you're filling out your, your prayer card who you're, gonna, who you're praying for to, to invite this Easter, and you got your invite, Easter invites this week. You'll have a lot more next week to hand out invites to invite people to our Easter celebration, and it's going to be good. There's also elders that are down here as well to pray with you, and uh, let, me give you, uh, let me give you a blessing today. Amen? Amen. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pray a scripture over you today. Father God, I thank you that according to Romans chapter 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you bless us on our coming in now. You, you bless us on our going out and our lying down and rising up. Everything we put our hands to this week. I thank you that it is blessed because we're blessed in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming today. We'll see you next Sunday out at Bay Valley Resort. God bless you.